Hi, everyone. I'm Tony DeCopo. The war of words between the president and senators from his own party escalated Tuesday as two lawmakers expressed their disapproval of Mr. Trump. Arizona Republican Jeff Flake also announced he is retiring from the Senate. He said President Trump's behavior and actions are dangerous to democracy. And he had a warning for his colleagues that the GOP could turn into a backward-looking minority party. Here's Nancy Cordes. None of this is normal. Arizona's Jeff Flake stood on the Senate floor, his voice quivering as he called the president indecent, reckless and undignified. When the next generation asks us, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you speak up? What are we going to say? Mr. President, I rise today to say enough. The breadth of his condemnation was matched by a series of comments made by his GOP colleague, Bob Corker, earlier in the day. The president uh, has great difficulty with the truth on many issues. Like Flake, Corker is retiring at the end of this term. It's a sad place from my perspective for our nation. And I think that the worst of it is going to be just the whole debasing, if you will, of our nation. Corker chairs the powerful Foreign Relations Committee. He said White House aides have repeatedly asked him to talk President Trump out of bad decisions. You know, it's obvious his, his political model and governing model is to divide. Um, and he has not risen to the occasion. Mr. Trump once thought so highly of Corker, he considered him for vice president. A great friend of mine, somebody respected by everybody, Senator Bob Corker. But today, the president called Corker incompetent and a lightweight who couldn't get elected dog catcher in Tennessee. When he gets hit, he's going to hit back. And uh, I think Senator Corker knows that. And he's, you know, maybe trying to get a headline or two on his way out the door. That does not explain why other big-name Republicans have also recently slammed the president's politics and behavior. Bigotry seems emboldened. It all made for a tense lunch today between the president and Senate Republicans, who said the stated topic, tax reform, barely came up. I, I don't have any observation about that. We're here. After lunch, the Senate's top Republican wouldn't address the elephant in the room. At what point do you have an obligation as a leader of this party to weigh in on these very serious criticisms of the president? What I have an obligation to do is to try to achieve the greatest cohesion I can among 52 Republicans to try to achieve for the American people the agenda that we set out to achieve. And tax reform is what we are about. Flake argued his party has a duty to speak out. I must say that we have fooled ourselves for long enough that a pivot to governing is right around the corner. I have children and grandchildren to answer to. And so, Mr. President, I will not be complicit or silent. The president's allies were undaunted. In fact, the conservative outlet Breitbart cheered Flake's decision to retire after just one term. They argued it was proof that Steve Bannon's strategy to try to force mainstream Republicans out of office is working, Tony. Wow. Uh, Nancy, Press Secretary uh, Sarah Sanders said Tuesday that she didn't think Senator Flake's comments were, in her words, befitting of the Senate floor. Was the location of this announcement important? It certainly was notable, Tony, because there are certain rules of decorum that kind of uh, govern the way that senators speak to one another on the Senate floor. Um, you know, they're not supposed to call uh, one or the other out by name, uh, not supposed to criticize each other directly. They can criticize the other side's policies, but they're not supposed to make it personal. But here you had uh, this Arizona senator basically saying that the president of the United States, the leader of his own party, is a threat to democracy. So he could not have been any more critical. Uh, he did, I should note, get a, a, an ovation in the Senate chamber after he finished speaking, which is another no-no. And the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who you just heard didn't want to weigh in on the criticism of the president today, did um, follow up 
his speech with uh, some comments of his own where he praised Flake and said that he had been a great senator and that uh, the, the Senate was lucky wow. to have him. And that uh, made a statement in and of itself. It was almost as if the Senate leader was sort of inoculating Flake from the uh, broadside that he knew Flake would be getting from the president and the White House and his allies. Wow. Wow. I, I want to ask you about the information in the tag to your piece, the position of uh, Breitbart News and the Bannon wing of the party that driving out moderate Republicans somehow helps the Trump strategy. Walk me through the logic there. Sure. And, you know, Flake is not, you know, he may be moderate in demeanor, but he is someone who has uh, really voted in lockstep with this president and the party almost all of the time. So while he has called the president out repeatedly and even wrote a book about um, the, the sort of culture in Washington and bemoaning the fact that you don't have the kind of decency that you used to here in Washington, uh, he has been a very reliable Republican vote. Um, the strategy is uh, for Steve Bannon uh, and, and others is to try to push out Republicans who they believe aren't suitably loyal to to this president. They say that uh, those are just people who are part of the swamp. They're part of the problem. And what you really need if you want to get things done in this country uh, is Republicans who aren't going to call out the president because they just wholeheartedly agree with his style and what he's doing. So, um, you know, they, they support uh, candidates in primaries who they think are to the right of some of these Republicans who are here on Capitol Hill. Now, Mitch McConnell himself has argued that that is a surefire way to lose the majority. He says some of these candidates that Bannon is backing in these primaries can't win a general election in places like Arizona that should be safe for Republicans, mm. but won't be if you have some of these fringe candidates going into the general election. Mm. We heard uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, in response to your question on the Hill today, say that he's trying to bring Republicans together and what the party is about at the moment is tax reform. Corker and Flake, where do they stand or do we know where they stand on the tax reform bill? It's hard to know where they stand right now because the tax reform bill is still being crafted. So uh, anyone who tells you that they are for the bill or uh, against it, you know, they're really operating without a whole lot of specifics <laughs> right now. For example, we know that there are going to be three or four uh, brackets down from the current seven, but we don't know exactly what those brackets will be. We don't know who will fall into them. So it's very difficult to calculate, for instance, uh, whether a middle class family would um, basically emerge um, pretty much the same as they are right now or whether they would end up paying more or paying less. Uh, but Corker has made it very clear that he is not going to support a tax reform package that um, drives up the debt by four or five, six trillion dollars. He says in addition to these corporate tax cuts, uh, individual cuts that he supports, you also have to find ways to raise revenue. You got to close loopholes. Uh, you got to eliminate some deductions. And that is really where the rubber meets the yeah. road, Tony, because that is what is so difficult politically to do. Republicans, by and large, agree um, on the cuts they want to make. We haven't seen a lot of agreement so far on what loopholes they want to close. Yeah. How do you pay for it? That is the eternal question. Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill for us. Nancy, thank you very much. You're welcome.